Hey folks, Sebastian Fly here. Welcome to Great Missenden and welcome to another bike review. Where today I'm out and about on a little retro strolled scrambler, a 125cc machine. This is the AJS Desert Scrambler. If you're interested in this machine, stick around and stay tuned. I'll tell you what I think of it. So first off, AJS then, what was that all about? Because uh, AJS is a brand that has absolutely bags of British heritage in the motorcycle world back in I think about 1909 they started making motorcycles and uh, throughout the early 20th century they made motorcycles of all sorts and cars running all the way up to uh, the late 60s when they were known for their scramblers and uh, around that time they were bought up by what was then I think Norton Villiers and got subsumed into that group and AJS is a standalone motorcycle brand kind of disappeared from the scene as all those uh, old British manufacturers kind of conglomerated around that time. However, I think in the uh, mid 70s, the AJS name was uh, saved, was bought out, and some of those uh, scramblers continued to be built in a handmade limited run capacity. And these days, AJS is still a British company, but now they uh, import Chinese source motorcycles. So uh, I know what you're going to say, it's another Chinese bike, I know. Well, I always get um, lots of mixed feedback whenever I review one of these Chinese source motorcycles because although it is very much a British brand this motorcycle itself is made in China the engine on here 125cc unit based on the Yamaha YB125 is actually made in the same factory in China that made the engine for the YBR125 so it is made to the same sorts of standards and is effectively the same engine even though it's not badged Yamaha. Okay so let's take a look at that engine then, here we are, that's the uh, YBR copy for like, it's a 124cc uh, unit, it puts out um, 7.3 kilowatts which if you're old school like me is about 10 brake horsepower uh, and 9.5 newton meters of torque which is uh, about 7 foot pounds, so as I say not going to win any races with that but a very reliable unit and as I say made in the same factory that made the original YBR 125. Um, interestingly it's got a kickstart as you can see on it, I have tried to use that but uh, not successfully I'm afraid, I think uh, it might be better if it wasn't a fuel injected one but I do like the idea that it's got a kickstart on there still. I have to say it feels remarkably smooth for a single. It's not at all thumpy, I don't know if there's a balancer shaft in here or what but uh, yeah, the engine feels quite nice, it's got a great note to it as well. The exhaust on here sounds nice. I'll just uh, go down this bit of road because it's a bit fast here, I can wind her up, let's just see what she's like. It's never going to win any races on the track list of course because it is only a 125 but let's see how she does great instrumentation on here look badged AJS it looks properly retro there we go looks like it's got six gears flat out and I'm doing 50 miles an hour now I weigh what do I weigh 11 and a half stone so it propels an 11 and a half stone bloke at 50 miles an hour, no problem. In fact, it's still going up. I think 55, it'll probably top out that. Downhill with a fine wind, you'll bit a bit quicker. But basically, this bike isn't built to uh, win races. It's built for commuting and learning to ride, that sort of thing. How about comfort on the Desert Scrambler? How's that stack up? Well, handlebars are nice and wide on it. Feels nice and comfortable. You're nice, uh, good leverage there. Obviously, it's a naked bike, so there's no wind protection. But the speed you're doing on this, that doesn't really matter. Uh, your legs are tucked up quite high it feels actually quite a big bike a little bit bigger than some of its competitors in the 125 space but your legs are tucked up in a bit of a sportier position than you would think you don't feel like you're sitting bolt upright as you do on say a Dark Bonneville there is a bit more of an acute angle at the leg the seat itself feels lovely and padded it's nice and big nice and wide feels nice and comfy let me show you it so what we just talked about the comfort on the bike, let's take a look at the seat on the uh, Desert Scrambler. Then here she is. It's got a seat height of 760 mil, so really low. Uh, so very easy to uh, get your feet on the deck. I'm five foot eight and I can get my feet bang flat on the floor. I think if you're a shorter rider, this would be no problem. But the seat on here, I just want to show you, is lovely and padded, nice and big. And uh, it's got the AJS logo on there as well. Uh, you know, it looks like a quality item, so nice and comfortable. Just to show you sat on here, look, I can get my feet basically flat on the deck. 
no problem at all with a bit of a bend in my leg. I'm five foot eight with a 32 inch leg and this bike is perfectly suited to me. I think for the shorter rider, this is perfect. Okay, let's check the brakes. Nothing behind me. Front brake seems absolutely fine. Let's just come around the corner here. Still nothing behind me. Just check the back brake. Yep, back brake works. Back brakes are never that great on bikes, but that one feels absolutely fine. So those brakes then, actually, when you look at the um, calipers here, you can see that it's actually a three-pot caliper, and that's a 300mm uh, single disc on the front. If we have a look down the back end, uh, we've got a much smaller disc and a single-pot caliper, uh, and that disc is a 210mm. Don't know who makes these brakes, um, but as I say, they seem to work quite well. Actually, I say they don't know, but it says on it LBN CBS. Never heard of them, but uh, they seem to work perfectly adequately for this uh, size of bike. It's obviously a very lightweight bike, 126 kilograms with 90% uh, fuel, so very light and easy to move around you may notice actually this bike doesn't have any mirrors that's not because they come without mirrors but this is because this is the press bike and it was prepared for uh, I think the Malay mile something like that it's got the stickers on it still and the mirrors were removed so uh, I can't tell you what the mirrors are like but the brakes are certainly adequate in terms of handling it's, it's very stable actually for a lightweight 125 it's um you do have to we're well, not really muscle it we have to make a definite, you know, grab with the handlebars to change its direction. So it's not all flighty and, and skittish in that manner. And the ride itself, yeah, it seems all right. Very basic suspension as you'd suspect, but these are bumpy old roads that I'm riding on and it's a comfortable ride. Suspension on the bike, super basic, very retro looking with the uh, gaiters, which I think is good. No adjustment, of course, and these are right way up forks, i.e. not upside down. Uh, and on the back, we've got, again, in keeping with its retro styling, it's got these twin shocks on the back, which look pretty cool and uh, are absolutely adequate for a bike of this size, power and weight. What are the controls like on the uh, Desert Scrambler? Well, all very conventional, the switch gear just the same as you'd find on any other bike it's not particularly expensive as you'd imagine because this is a budget bike but uh, works very well it's very tactile feels fine the displays here as I've mentioned well not displays the gauges very old school they look great rev counter on the right speedo on the left you got your idiot lights odometer it is marked in miles an hour and kilometers so that's all good Let's take a quick look at those controls then on the bike. Here we go. Uh, bog standard switch gear, nothing complicated about it. Indicators and lights on the left hand side. Over on the right, you've got your starter and your kill switch. Uh, you've got those amazing retro styled clocks there, which are badged AGS, which, AJS, which I think are nice. And then if we turn the ignition on, we've actually got an LED uh, front light. The indicators are LED as well. Uh, and I think that looks really cool. Yeah, nothing complicated about uh, how the bike is controlled. I have to say, the exhaust on this sounds absolutely fabulous. For riding around the lanes like this, it's just a great fun bike. I really do love 125s. If you haven't ridden one for a while, get yourself a go on one, because they're just a hoot. You're not going to get yourself in too much trouble with the law on it, but they're a lot of fun just to rag around the corners and just see if you can maintain your momentum. Alright, a few features on the bike that I like that I thought were worth pointing out. First off, this exhaust, not only does it sound good, but it looks good as well. Really, actually, that's a really nicely made piece on it, uh, as is the paintwork. I mean, a really nice uh, job on the tank there. Uh, what isn't so good, maybe, as is in keeping with a lot of these um, Chinese um, source bikes, is the welds. If you have a check out those welds, they look a little bit, you know, pigeon crappy, so you have to sort of take account of that. But then it is built to a price. Has a uh, centre stand, which is an excellent addition. And, uh, yeah, what else to say? Oh, I don't like the um, brake pedal there that looks a little bit um, rubbish a bit of a you know a bit of rubber on there would have just finished that off i think uh what else wheels look good got these knobbly tires on here uh made by a company called kenda don't know much about those but they look like they're probably all right for a bit of uh, light green laning fuel tank on here good for 13 liters love it in this orange color comes in three colors by the way a metallic red black and this orange uh, and this apparently will do 128 miles per gallon absolutely amazing frugal bike this not only to buy at uh, something like 2800 pounds on the road uh, but also to run as well at 128 miles per gallon so the upsides to this bike as far as i can determine on this first ride then obviously the price less than three grand for a really cool looking bike it's got some lovely features like the clocks, the finish of the paint, the exhaust, sounds really good as well as looks good. Downsides of the bike, well you've got that Chinese factor, don't know what the longevity would be like, I've got no reason to 
believe it wouldn't be good, but uh, plenty of people have written to me in the past about other manufactured Chinese source bikes and said they don't last long. So if you've uh, if you've got one of these AJS bikes, I'd love to know how well it's done long term. Other downside, I suppose it's uh, I mean it is only 125, but it does top out quite quickly in terms of speed. As I say, about 55 miles an hour tops. Not probably important if uh, you're commuting around town. That would be absolutely fine. Okay, so there we have it. That's the uh, AJS Desert Scrambler. What's my sort of closing thoughts on this first ride review of the bike? Well, that's how I like it very much. As I say, I've ridden a number of these Chinese sourced bikes. And, uh, yeah, this one stacks up very well. I'd put it certainly towards the top of my list. So when you're comparing it against things like, you know, the Hanways, the Sinuses, Heralds, hello, sir, the Mutt, those sort of bikes and it compares very favorably it feels a bit more substantial than those in terms of its size i think this would suit a, a bigger person a bit better than some of those other bikes i love the styling of this i think the paint is lovely i love those retro dials they look great the stuff you're looking at all the time is good switch gear is nice to use it's comfortable it's a nice place to be i think if you're on the market for a bike to get you around town you've got a relatively short commute to do or you want to learn to ride you want to do your CVT something like that then this is a pretty cool option at an amazing price frugal 125 miles per gallon you ain't going to get cheaper motoring than this of course like all these machines time will tell how well they stand up to the uh, vagaries of the British weather so if you've got one of these or you've ridden one for a few years love to hear how you've gone do leave your comments below about how you found the AJS in terms of its, um, you know, whether the whether it does well in British weather, because that's something that always comes up with, re with these reviews. And of course, it's not something that I can comment on, having just ridden this new bike. But from a straightforward uh, riding perspective, easy to ride, not intimidating, great fun as all 125s are. You can just rag it around the place. It sounds good. It looks cool. Definitely worth your consideration. Anyway, look forward to your comments below as usual. That's it for this time. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.